Hello everyone. Welcome to JG Chemistry. Today we are going to learn what is proton decoupled carbon 13 NMR of resonance C13 NMR and DEPT technique for the detection of number of carbons in the unknown molecule. First we will learn about proton decoupled carbon 13 NMR spectrum. So in this technique we know basically that proton and carbon both are IR NMR active and so both will couple to each other and since we know our organic molecules are made up of carbon and hydrogen so our molecule is having many hydrogen and carbon so it is going to be a very complex spectrum. To simplify it we basically decouple the coupling between the proton and carbon so that we will get the signal only for the carbons. So basically first we will see that this technique destroy all the interaction between the proton and carbon and therefore we get only singlets for the number of different kind of carbons present in a molecule. So ultimately we are going to simplify the spectrum. We will see this by taking one example. This is a molecule and if you see we have done the numbering of different type of carbon so you can say the total number of carbons so aromatic car ring is having total 6 carbons apart from that you have more 3 carbons are there so total 9 carbons are there but if we see the spectrum we will see total Num number of uh, spectral lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 uh, singlets we are getting means we have 7 different kinds of carbon present in the molecule. It means out of 9, 7 singlets are there, 2 are chemically equivalent carbon and that we will see. So first we will start with the methyl as you can see here. This CH3 is chemically distinguished so you will get the peak here in the C13 NMR. The splitting between the carbon and hydrogen has been removed so we are not getting here splitting as a quartet rather we will get the singlet here for this carbon. In the shielded region, the CH2 which is present here attached to the oxygen which is having an electronegative so compared to C9 it is slightly deshielded. And so you are getting once more singlet for the CH2 which is chemically distinguished carbon. Next further we goes. So we will see here there are total 6 carbons in the aromatic ring. But as you can notice that we have 2 quaternary carbon C1 and C4 here. And we have 4 CH carbon here. So basically C3 and C5 are chemically equivalent carbon will give you a same signal and similarly C2 and C6 are chemically equivalent will give you the same signal because it is in the same chemical environment and quaternary carbon usually is of weak intensity so you can see here C1 peak and C4 is given because it is attached to the oxygen. So C4 will be further more deshielded as compared to C1. So quaternary carbon you can see here C1 and C4 and the reason for aromatic carbon we have in the range of 120 to 160 and you can find the peaks present in this range. And finally you have aldehyde carbonyl carbon which is uh, the CH carbon here. It is again giving you a singlet here in the range of around 200 suggests the presence of carbonyl carbon in our unknown molecule. So basically each carbon, each different type of carbon has been given a certain chemical shift range. So if you follow the table, you can find out the respective range for the different kind of carbons. So in this way, this particular spectrum belongs to the proton decoupled carbon 13 NMR and it is very much simplified. If you have proton coupled, so each peak will be splitted by the neighboring protons like in case of CS3 it is going to be a quartet and plus one will be, will be applied. In case of CH2, C8 signal is going to be triplet and so you will have many lines in the spectrum and it is going to be a big complex spectrum. Therefore, we simplify it by decoupling technique. So this is the proton decoupled carbon 13 NMR. Next we will see the off resonance decoupled spectra. What is the advantage of this over decoupled? 
we'll see basically the important information whether you have ch3 in this molecule you have how many kinds of ch2 and uh, ch are present in your unknown molecule this important information we are losing in proton decoupled spectrum so basically we go for this technique of resonance where this retains this coupling uh, between the carbon and proton and uh, by using the same n plus 1 rule you can see the splitting between the carbon and hydrogen but the intensity of the coupling will be very less so we will see the same example and find out how does it look like so as you can notice here you can see the vestigial uh, splitting between the carbon and hydrogen which retain this information about the nature of the carbon so as you can see this C9 signal is giving you a quartet suggests this is a CH3 carbon. So this is very important information which we were losing in proton decoupled but we are saving it in off resonance spectrum. Similarly for C8 since it is CH2 n plus 1 rule if you apply 2 plus 1 is 3 so you are going to have a triplet here. The singlet is more intense and you are saving this information as well. So we have simplified of resonance decoupled spectrum which saves this information about the nature of the carbon. Now here you have C3, C5 signal as a doublet. Similarly C2, C6 signal as a doublet suggests that it is the CH carbon. And you can notice here you are finding C1 and C4 as a singlet here which suggests it is a quaternary carbon. It is not having any proton attached to it. And lastly, you have here a doublet at around 200 suggests you have a carbonyl carbon which is having one hydrogen. So now we'll see what is DEPT technique. Basically, this technique is useful to differentiate between CS3, CS2 and CH type of uh, signals. So here you have three different sets of experiments uh, at three different angle. First is at 45 degree angle where you get only the protonated signals here. It means the quaternary carbon signal will be missing at 45 degree. Next is at 90 degree where you will get only the signals for the carbon which is having only one hydrogen that is CH signals up above the plane. And lastly, you have 135 degree DEPT where you will get signals for CH and CH3 up the plane while CH2 you will get down the plane. And in that way, you can distinguish that how many CH are present in your unknown molecule, how many CH3 are there and how many CH2 are there. And we can make a note that the proton decoupled C13 NMR, which we have already covered, have all the four different carbons in the spectrum. It means that decoupled spectrum you will get the quaternary carbon signal as well while here in DEPT experiment the quaternary carbon signal will be missing. So the peak which is missing here and present in the decoupled you can also identify that how many quaternary carbon are present in your unknown molecule. So let's take one example here. Now in this uh, example you can see we have the two CS3 which are chemically equivalent so we will get only one signal for this and we have uh, one CH here in this molecule and we are getting two CH2 and one more CS3 here. So basically two different CH3, two CH2 and one CH and you have one quaternary carbon. So if you talk about first 45 degree, so 45 degree will give you all the carbons which are having either CH, CH2 or CH3. So basically 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 signals we are expecting. So you are having 5 signals for the protonated carbon. Next we need to find out among this we don't know whether which is CH, which is CH2 or CH3. Then we will go for 135 degree and the peak which are coming down the plane clearly indicates that the signal 3 and 4 belongs to the CH2. So we can identify that our unknown molecule is having 2 CH2 in our molecule. 
and now we have to identify now whether the signal 1 2 and 6 is ch or ch3 for that we can go for dpt 90 degree which tells you the signals belongs to ch and we notice here only one signal is coming that is for 2 carbon we have 1 ch so rest of the two signals 1 and 6 belongs to the ch3 so in this way we can identify that in our unknown molecule we have 2 CH2, we have 2 CH3 and 1 CH and the peak which is missing here carbon 5 that is the quaternary carbon. So in that way you can distinguish between different types of carbon, protonated carbon like CH, CH2 and CH3 and also recording the normal spectrum of carbon 13 proton decoupled you can notice the position of the quaternary carbon and so you can identify different types of carbon present in the unknown molecule